Let's do a quick kick check. I'm wearing the Puma Clyde Pharrell's NMDs. This is probably the most recent colorway that came out, but it's fun. I partnered with DoorDash. Oh, yes! You and your team. Come on, DoorDash! I read some things about the Air Force One and Premium Good collab. Can you spill a little tea? Put some respect yes. on Houston's name, right? Put some right? respect <laughs> on the H-Town, okay? Welcome to Sneaker Fiends, a dope new series about all things kicks and a love letter to the women who rock them. I'm Kia, also known as the Notorious KIA, and in this show, we'll be highlighting all the queens of the culture, from trendsetters to trim breakers, divas, trailblazers, bosses, and designers. And of course, checking out their collection. So kick back, relax in your flyest pair, and let's get it poppin'. I can't believe we're wrapping the first season of Sneaker Fiends. Ah, it's been mad fun, crazy dope, inspiring, everything I ever wanted it to be. But wait, we ain't done yet. We're still in H-Town. I got two more queens I want to introduce you to. First up, we have Jennifer Ford of Premium Goods, Houston's own premier sneaker shop. And next up, we have Tasha Sanders, who is an experienced curator of her grills. And of course, they're going to show us their collection. So let's go. Jennifer Ford. I am the owner of Premium Goods in Houston, Texas, the great state of Texas. My favorite shoe is the undefeated Dunk Deconstructed designed by Chris Gibbs. It was super awesome to see a person of color design such a wonderful shoe. The colors in that shoe are amazing to mix the brown with the pink and the blue. It's delicious. Hi. Hi, you're so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Good to meet you. You too. Jennifer, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you for joining us on Sneaker Fiends. Where exactly are we? <laughs> Let's start there. <laughs> this is Premium Goods. We are in Houston, Texas. I've been in the same location 18 years, and it's just been an amazing ride. We opened up our store a little bit this year to give women a better shopping opportunity, which is really nice. That's the way the world is going, and being a female in this industry so long, it just only makes sense. What inspires you to open a sneaker store? 18 years ago, there were no boutique shops in Texas, let alone Houston, and very few in the South at that time. I feel like the closest store would have been shoe gallery in Miami. Okay. Uh, so it was needed. I mean, leaving New York and seeing, you know, shoe stores on every corner and then coming here and being stuck to only shopping in the mall and not being able to get, at the time it was called indie products. So not being able to get indie product and my home city was very sad and I missed home. What is it like owning a store? Like what's your day to day like? <sighs> it's, a lot, it's a lot of work. I wouldn't be able to do it without my team. And they hold most of the weight, especially nowadays. Back in the day, my day-to-day -day was come into work. I, I think we opened at noon at the time, which is hilarious thinking about now, but come in and work hard from noon to seven when we closed. Now I don't have to do that so much. I've been blessed to be able to expand my family. And I come in occasionally and check on everybody, make sure everyone's happy because I'm only as happy as my staff is. And then I get to go home and enjoy time with my family, so. What advice would you have for someone that wants to get into owning a sneaker store or any business? One, be tough. Two, be willing to risk it all. And three, just have fun. If you're not enjoying what you do, then what's the point of it? What would you say is your earliest sneaker memory? My sister, um, brought the love to me of sneakers and she's not even a sneaker head which is quite funny she was just very fashionable i guess at her time so my first sneaker was the jordan 4 the the blacks she had the white black and red ones my mind was blown it was just an amazing beautiful shoe let's talk about your collection how many would you say is in your collection if i had to guess how many shoes i have it's in the hundreds but not like outrageous okay for me Sneakers are tied to like specific memories, like they're like snapshots of culture. Right. So what's a sneaker that takes you back to a moment that you're most proud of? The Vashti 2s are, are one of my favorites. It's just amazing to see a shoe design by someone like me, like a, a chick who just really loves the culture and was seen early on in her career in life to be a, an influencer. Another one I enjoy is I have the uh, Anna Wintour 
or threes. Please mm -hmm. love. <laughs> I know, right? I have both colors and I love them because uh, again, another influencer, Anna Winter was able to take high fashion and bring it in the home of everybody to let you know that like, this is achie not achievable for you, but like, this is fashion, this is an art, you know? Like, make dressing and life a lot more creative. Yes, because we are fly and fashionable, yes. we're versatile, we're women. We're not like, monolithic right like, sometimes i feel like brands i've been speaking about this so much as far as just the shrink it and pink it yeah and just you know think that's the women's market so i've been open uh 18 years and being a female who loves sneakers there were very sad moments of just black and pink shoes you know and it's like you can only wear them so much seeing the change now is very refreshing and it's nice to know that there are people in corporate america looking out for us women yes when we were at Woodstock Ivy, I asked uh, Tiana, who's the buyer over there, like, what's the styles that people always gravitate towards? Like, obviously, it's just the Jordan 1 mm -hmm. over there, dunks and stuff. What's the styles that you're noticing that women in Houston are gravitating towards? We are very much uh, a Nike and Jordan city. Although we do sell our fair share of Adidas and other brands and we love them equally the same, but I feel like our stronger models are retro Jordans for sure. What do you hope to see in sneaker culture in the future? More people like me, right? <laughs> Other females opening stores, uh, more female designers. I mean, we're wearing the shoes. We should be able to design the shoes that we're wearing. And just the love for wearing your sneakers to come back. Let's get into your personal style. What comes first, the fit or the sneaks? Oh, the fit. Okay. Yes. I have so many shoes that the outfit comes first and it's very easy for me to pick footwear to match after. All right, so let's do a little kick check. I'm wearing the Puma High Court that June designed. What about you? I am wearing Pharrell's NMDs. This is probably the most recent colorway that came out, but it's fun. Animal print goes with everything. What advice would you have for women that want to get into sneakers but don't really know how to style them? Oh, it's not that serious. <laughs> have fun. Like, honestly, the footwear is so fun. That's why they have silly names like um, I think there's some Katie's called the peanut butter and jellies yeah. you know but just like have fun put them on feel good you know we only get one life and one body like dress it up your body is art go for it what sneaker do you think every woman should own in their closet I feel like it is a shame not to have a bread colorway and a one in your household because it, it goes well with everything. Usually most team colors are white, black, and red or have some version of it. For comfort, I am gonna say the NMDs. My staff will ask at me because I usually wear these a lot, but they're very easy to pull on. You don't have to do the lacing once you already uh, laced it. There's some beauty in Pharrell's shoe. It may be his fountain of youth, but he makes a very comfortable shoe and most of them have motivational like words on them. Holding it down while lifting us up. That's your motto. <laughs> yes. Can you talk to us about what you're doing to mentor young girls and why it's important? You have to see it to believe it. So it's important to me when I can because we need to see more people like me. I don't come from generational wealth, so opening a store was a risk. Not having anything in our city like me before, you know, premium goods was a risk. But something beautiful can happen from it. I read some things about the Air Force One and premium goods collab. Can you spill a little tea <laughs> or still hush hush? I was blessed with the opportunity to design a women's Air Force One and it was been an extremely fun process. It's nice to um, put my creativity on something that's so iconic. Is there a release date? How can we get it? How can you get it? You know where to come. We have a website. There we is. have a storefront. Right there. Yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's sweet. Someone said she flowers, but then I was like, oh, that's for me. That's so sweet. I wanted to give you your flowers for all that you've done to push the culture forward. Like it's so needed. You inspire me so much. You inspire so many young girls and you show it that this is possible for us. And sometimes that's all we need. We need to see it, to believe it in ourselves. So thank you for all the work that you do and will continue to do. You're a pioneer in this industry. Thank you so much. You're so <laughs> uh, Thank you so much. It was many years in which I felt like I was the only one in the room or in, in the event, but it's nice to see so many more more of us. Like I have girlfriends now, you know, like who love sneakers just as much as me and it feels good. So thank you. These are beautiful. Who does my flowers? Thank you so much. Now let's get into One Kick Three Fits where I take one dope sneaker and show you how I style it three different ways. I'm so 
so glad I got to give Jennifer her flowers. I'm so inspired by her journey and all that she's doing for Houston and sneaker culture. She created a blueprint 18 years ago and it's still going strong today. Next up, I'm headed to meet Tasha of Her Girls and she's gonna give us the tea on all things sneaker events. Let's go. What up, y'all? It's your girl, Tasha Kwan, CEO and founder of Her Grails. My favorite shoe, Air Max 90 Infrared, because classic silhouette. Can't go wrong with a 90. Hey, hey Kia! First of all, I don't remember you being this tall. I'm so tall. <laughs> Welcome to Shoe Oh my God. I'm love, so excited love, to love. have you. Yo, I know we are in a sneakerhead house. That's fire. Got to have the heat check, grail <laughs> check, we do it all. Yes, Welcome, yes, yes. come Thank on you. in to my humble abode. Oh my God. I'm so excited to have I you. I know, Welcome. I'm so excited to be here. You came on a cool day. Come on into my office. Ooh, this is nice. Thanks for, we're trying to get some work done. <laughs> What can you tell us about the Houston sneaker scene? I think we get slept on a lot. I think we kind of get put into Chicago or we get forgotten about because of New York and LA. Mm -hmm. But it, the sneaker scene is crazy. Like, I think Houston is very about that sneaker life. Like, we really, you know, they look forward to it. Put some respect yes. on Houston's name, right? Put some right? respect <laughs> on the H-Town, okay? And I don't think I could be doing her grails anywhere else. The support here is unmatched. You're an experienced curator. Yeah. Ooh founded Her Grails. Yes. Talk to us a little bit about that, what inspired you, what you guys are doing. Yeah, Her Grails, we just celebrated four years. Congrats. Uh, thank you, <laughs> I know, and it's been great. You know, I originally started it, I was going to sneaker conventions, I worked for one here, and I would go and there wouldn't be any female vendors, and barely any size, you know, our sizes. So I'm like, well, I'm going to these shows. I mean, I'm sure other women want to go, there's just nothing for us. And so that's really how it started, like creating a space for women in sneakers to come and be comfortable. We throw these amazing experiences tailored towards women. So we really like to make sure the details are focused on women. It's a vibe. Like we set the tone for a good time. We have music, photo ops, activities, of course kicks, giveaways. And so really it's just like hanging out with your girls, kiki in, but in our kicks. And, and the sneaker community in Houston is so great. And so I think we really have women that support us and follow us and then come to every event. What would you say is like your earliest sneaker memory? Definitely sports for sure. I've always been like very into sports. I played softball, basketball, and soccer. I think like high school is when I was like, okay, I have to have these good basketball shoes mm -hmm. and we need to look fresh. I think senior year for sure. Let's do a quick kick check. What yes. are we wearing today? So I'm wearing the Puma Clyde. These are Jay-Z's 444 album one. So on the back yes. they say the area code mm -hmm. and H-O-U. So these are great. You know, these came out when he came on tour and I think there's only like around 44 made. So I love these. All right, Tasha, let's get into your collection. Let's, absolutely. I've showcased a few of my favorite and most coveted pairs. Nice. We'll start off with the Thai Temple, which is the shoe that was like my first one that I kind of started my collection. Do you still wear them? Yeah, absolutely. I wore these to our Graceful Laces, I think last year. Uh, so not too often though, again. My favorite pair always, this is my re-up pair, Air Max 90 Infrared. Absolutely, man. You can wear this with anything. I love the silhouette. This is one of my favorite silhouettes. And it's just like a great colorway. This one's a little more orange than the original, but still a good one. Air Max 90, you can't go wrong, bro. These are fire. Dress it up, dress it down all day. So that's my, I got one to rock, one to stock. Listen, we keep this one on ice. <laughs> really? Because it's my favorite, you have to. I will wow. wear them out. All right, which pair did you spend the most on? So I'm team retail. I I think I've maybe spent $20 over retail. I do wow. not, I'm a true stickler for, if, it, if I don't get it, it's not meant to be. There's a few pairs that I'm like still sick about that I need in my closet, but I don't want to pay the money. Wow, so listen, that is such an interesting perspective yeah. because you're the first person that I even know that like, I'm not, yep. not even. <laughs> yep. And maybe that's why my collection isn't as big as some, but definitely. But it's meaningful. Like you, at, least you, at least you're standing by like your integrity, your values when it comes to sneakers. Absolutely, and I only want to buy kicks that I will really wear. Yep. You know, not just because of hype or because somebody else I saw it and I want to be like them. No, I buy kicks that I want to wear. And that's why I bought two of those. And you know, <laughs> that I'll spend a couple, I'll get a couple pair. 
So I see some her grills, forces, Absolutely. and pumas. Can we talk about them? Absolutely. So, you know, we have to have a couple custom pairs. We couldn't be her grills without a couple custom pairs. Yes. So we have, these are custom. This was done by Miles. He's here locally, the Crooks game. Okay. And he killed it. Which I told him keep it simple, but he has the Houston skyline here and then added our logo. And then of course, Hugh for Houston. When did you start like collecting? Like when, when did that thought happen for you? Yeah, I would say right when I graduated high school, I saw some dunks coming out. This is the SB era. And so I was like, I need them. And that was like the first time I was like, I have to get this pair. What do I have to do? Who would you say is some of your inspirations in sneaker culture? Man, I love Melody Asani. You know, I've been a huge fan of her since she was with Reebok. You know, her jewelry. I have some of her very old pieces. I think she's such an innovator. I think she's very creative. I love a creative woman. And again, I think she's done a lot for women in sneakers. They're doing such amazing things. Great pioneers, things. Pioneers, but yes. you know, there's still so much work to be done. Mm. What do you think is missing in sneaker culture? I think having women in these higher up positions. Like, cool, you can hire us to do work for you, but I want to be on the same level as these VPs and these higher ups. I think that's important, especially if you're doing women projects. It should be a women team. Yep. And again, like, you know, especially putting like black and brown women, minority women in these positions is important, especially if you're tailoring it towards us and we're your demo. I think we should probably have somebody that look like us Facts. making them decisions. <laughs> now y'all turn up. Yes. But y'all also give back. Of Why course. was it important for you to add that philanthropic aspect to her girls? Absolutely, because I think especially in Houston, we come do all these great things, but at the end of the day, what are we doing to put back into the community? And Houston is important because there's still a lot of underprivileged children that don't have sneakers. And then socks, I think a lot of people don't think about the socks. Mm -hmm. And so, especially with Graceful Laces, our sneaker charity ball, we give back to Soul Love and they are a nonprofit here in Houston. And that was important too. We're not just cutting a check, we're making sure the money is going towards actual sneakers for these children in the Houston area. Hold on, what are you saying? I got a surprise for you. Oh, it's hard to surprise me. <laughs> oh! So, Tasha, I partnered with DoorDash. Oh, to yes! Give you and your team. Come on, DoorDash! DoorDash we gotta card. eat! Come on, yes! Come on, DoorDash! You can use these DoorDash gift cards for everything restaurants, groceries, and they'll bring it right to your door. Thanks, Kia. We love all that you do for the community, you and your team. And so you gift us, so we wanted to gift you. Oh my gosh, how <laughs> sweet. That is like the sweetest thing ever. <laughs> oh my God, thank you. Welcome. What a great surprise. Lastly, what sneaker should every woman own? Air Force One. All day. Period. Low or mid. All day. <laughs> well, thank you, Tasha, so much. I've learned so much about events and yes. her girls, and I look forward to everything that you guys are doing in the future. Yes, thank you so much for coming to the city and taking the time out to talk with me. I really appreciate it. Thank Hopefully, you. Hopefully, next time I see you in New York yes. for an event. New York, we'll be out it. there. Her girls <laughs> in New York coming soon. That's a wrap for episode five in this season of Sneaker Fiends. Are you a sneaker fiend yet? Ah, I've had so much fun and I'm so inspired. I hope you are too. We set out to highlight queens of the culture and we did just that, but there's still so much more work to do. So let us know where should we go next and who we should highlight. But until next time, this is Sneaker Fiends. And of course, checking out their collection. Yeah. Okay. What up, y'all? It's your girl Tasha Kwan of Her Grails, and my favorite shoe is the Air Max 90 Infrared. Oh, it was. <laughs>